Jeremy as Cook here, and last we left my little clear crawler, it was crawling around on the table and on the floor, but it didn't have any sort of head or any sort of remote control capabilities. In this video, I'll show you how I went from this, just crawling around on the floor, to actually having a head and being remote controlled with an NRF 24L01 module along with an Arduino Nano on board and an Arduino Uno as the controller itself. The controller uses a joystick shield as the remote control, and it's also got a big red button to cut off the motors that propel it when needed. So one of the clear crawler's ancestors, what I call the clear walker, had a, a turret-based head that would just look left and right, up and down. While this was a really awesome build and, and something that got some attention, I haven't had this walk in quite a while, so it was time to strip the head off of it. I didn't feel too bad taking it off, and well, it's, it's a pretty usable part. You can get them from Servo City and pretty pretty high quality stuff. That screw came off nicely and I, I did undid all the electrical connections like that 8x8 LED matrix that would be recycled later. Hose it off with a little, little air gun. It's been really, really useful. And then put it into its new mount. Rather than cutting out the mounting holes in the router, which, which wasn't really small enough to do this with the bit I was using, I went ahead and, and put this on my manual milling machine. While well, I love my automated tools, it's still great to have some manual tools around just in case you need something like that. These are 1024 screws, which I pretty much standardize on, on a lot of my builds. Makes it really easy to go back and forth and not have too many screws if you know what they're going to be. There I'm putting some holes in so I can put some zip ties on, on there to secure everything. Tried hot glue initially, but that just wasn't, wasn't holding it well enough. Zip ties look a little shoddy, but sometimes, but I, I think they're really great. And in this case, the yellow, I think, just set everything off nicely. With that all done, it was time to draw up the head. I'm using just clear material on, on Fusion 360. And using that as a reference, I drew out the, the 3D printed part. Copied that, rotated it, and I had a nice, nice copy for the top. They're pretty much the same in form, but then there's a couple little little differences that I put in later. And most noticeable, of course, is the face that I extruded out and then put some holes through it. Could have done this as one one uh, sketch, I believe, or at least maybe two. Little chamfer. Yeah, it looks nice. And the top went on right nicely like that. Another addition was these round parts that I could I could tap out extrude out and then tap for a ten, another 1024 screw that would hold the top on you know after the after the side polycarbonate got put on that would just slide down and retain it put some holes in the top for the sound too the bottom part being printed out top part was earlier and yeah it looks really nice on my little monoprice maker select mini looking good oh Oh, I know. That's that's no good. That was a little disappointing. I was I was tempted to just throw it away, but decided that I could I could tap it out and then I could just glue it back in place. So there I am tapping it for the 1024 screws. And a little bit of super glue or cyanoacrylate glue, and it was all good, or so I'd hoped. Had to put this in place just just right, almost like I was setting the bone. Or so I'd imagine. I'm obviously not a doctor. But put some clamps on and then let it set for quite a while. From there, it was time to move on to some of the electronics. Here's the connector for the LiPo battery. Just uh, heat shrinking that into place. Looks, looks pretty nice with a heat shrink layer on there. And then this is the big cutoff switch that supplies power to the motors when it's or motor driver when it's it's on and not when it's off. The cool thing is though when when it is off it still supplies power to the Arduino board so I can move the head around or program things. Makes things re really easy, really cleans up things. I don't have to worry about it running around on the on the table or off the table I should say. And to put that in there to put the light on and then when I turn it on it goes through the driver and look at that. Success. It turns on. Looking good. Initially I decided I wanted to put a PWM signal in there. And I think it's programmed like that now. But at some point I realized that 
<laughs> much much under 100 percent and it just doesn't go anywhere once it's once it's under load you can see that here so i turn it on and it's not really doing anything you can see it kind of kind of shutter around a little bit but until i pick it up and you can see it's moving there one, one side is and the other side really isn't it's just not doing anything so it was time to put on full power and with that done it turned around excellently and you can see it just just goes crazy it, it's just ready to go i'm really excited about how this is going to turn out and you know what do you know a spoiler it, it does look pretty pretty good at the end of the video and if you've seen it in person hopefully you liked it too so definitely let me know if you have in the comments this is the bottom part that would hold on the lipo battery but i did find that this this hole wasn't quite big enough to put the connector through i could rewire it and slide it through but instead of doing that i put it on the milling machine which again is great to have if if you don't plan things quite perfectly and put that together looking looking pretty nice the idea was that the lipo would hang off the bottom and i'd hook it on with uh with velcro that's that worked it turned out to be a pretty good technique. There it is, just going forwards and then backwards. I had no real control here, but just the Arduino's program to, to reverse it. Besides remote control, what it still lacks here is the head. And you can see there I'm just testing it out with the 8x8 matrices. On the outside, here's the here's the clear, I think it's polycarbonate, that I had to cut out to, to make the head. This is again salvaged from some old old parts from the clear clear walker some stuff I didn't some material I didn't use so I had it on hand so that in and looks nice with that on there the bolts went together nicely and everything yeah everything should be good I use button head screws here because they're a bit wider and can retain things nicely so that worked out nicely and there's me testing the lines on the 8x8 matrices and then here's an early version of the eyes I wasn't really crazy about how, how it looked with the really hollow bit in the inside, so I filled them out quite a bit, and that's pretty much what I stuck with. Now, of course, on the final version, I don't have it animated yet, but that's something that I'll probably want to add in. Drilling another hole here for the for the wires to go through. Just make that all nice and neat. I think I end up zip-tying zip those together. And that bolt there is the only bolt that really holds it on, so that gets loose sometimes, so have to tighten that up occasionally but overall it's not such a bad not such a bad design oh and of course here's that switch really happy about how it turned out it just looks looks really great like you're arming a missile or something yep took, took a little while to get it to get it on there but once once i did worked really well so here's an interesting bit in the project my arduino nano io board i had to drill a hole in it because i didn't have quite enough room in the clear crawler itself. I had to actually drill a hole through this and then thread the, the bolt through it. Kind of a, a neat technique. I wasn't sure if that would work very well, but haven't had a problem with it yet. The motor driver board was, of course, held down with some hot glue. Like like many of my projects, it's definitely populated with hot glue, so that, that's a good thing. Plug the power in, it should be, should be ready to go. Just flip the switch, and now you have power, or at least lights and light goes off. It takes a little while for the power to go out. I think there's a capacitor on there right now, but it's got 12 volts now. Turn that out, goes down to one, but the, the light on the Arduino is still on, so it can still be programmed, and the head can actually still move if you need that to happen. Motor driver had some nice, uh, nice screw terminals I could screw everything into, so that was good. Kept everything nice and secure. Now, going back to some early experiments with my Arduino Nano and the Uno board, you can see kind of the setup I had here. I'd have an Arduino Uno with a joystick board and linked to an Arduino Nano, which they both have an NRF24L01. Right here, I'm just experimenting to make sure I can turn this LED on. But one thing you'll notice is that on the controller board, I've got a little capacitor across the, across the leads of the NRF24L01. I do not have that across the ones in, on the receiver. And that little capacitor makes a huge difference. It's just, it just makes mixing so much easier. So if you're gonna try something like this, I definitely recommend having one of those capacitors on it. Also, another thing with this IO shield, it needs to be powered by the, um, the jack, the barrel jack, not so much the nano itself. So between those two, two things, I had a few little problems, but after a while it, it's, pretty consistent now and pretty much works when I start it up. So 
that's always a good thing. Just to point out my capacitor use, you can see me soldering them on here. Got a bigger one on one of them than the other, but it doesn't seem to really matter as long as you've got a decent sized capacitor on both of them. Here's some early experimentation. It was a little rough at first, but one thing that really helped was having two instances of the Arduino IDE side by side. You gotta open them independently of each other, but once you do that, you can monitor the serial port of both Arduinos, which is extremely helpful. So there I am checking everything out. Head looks pretty good, going left and right. Turn that on and looks really good. Great to have that power supply on there. I don't have the battery hooked up quite yet, but you can see the basics, turns left and right, kind of like a tank or differential steering, as you could say. Forwards, backwards, and forwards again. On the bottom here, I, I got a little crazy with the capacitors and put another capacitor on the across the leads of the of the I.O. board. Yeah, you know, I don't know how much that helped, but I think it's always good to have a little bit of extra extra room in there if, if you need it. A little sound too, just to Say hi to everybody, and then here's the lipo going in. Yep, there it goes. Powered on, and it's ready to go. Back, forwards, back and forwards. Even slides around on the table a little bit, which, which I thought was kind of cool. So, so far, it's gone to two Maker Fairs and even the Hackaday Super Conference, which hopefully you saw it there at one of those even. So definitely let me know. I'd love to hear if you'd met me somewhere like that or met the Clear Crawler, of course. Um, otherwise, if, if you want to give this video a thumbs up, that would be awesome. Or even subscribe, that would be even better. Or even better, leave me a comment. Thanks so much for watching. This is Jeremy S. Cook and the Clear Crawler signing off.